Welcome back to the channel. We have Gregorio with us. We have two Hello. motorcycles, which can only mean one thing. We've got another comparison for you. Well, we it's not really a comparison, is no, it? Correct. It's more of a, uh, let's take a couple of bikes out and see how they are, because they're both BMW GSs, if you haven't already realised. Same bike, but slightly different. Exactly. Adventure versus standard. Exactly. And what is more interesting is we've got the auto, the ASA, on the standard GS, so we can have a play around with that automatic gearbox, yep. see what it's like. I went on the launch of the Yamaha AMT system, uh, six weeks ago, so I've tried the Yamaha version, so yep. it'll be interesting to see how the BMW version compares, and we get to ride the new GSA new, with us. Fairly controversial, adventure, but on the um, automatic shift assist on the BMW, unlike the Yamaha, it's got a lever that you use with the foot, yeah, you still, rather than You, you rather still got the pedal. You still got the pedal. If you, if you want, you can put it in auto mode as well, can't you? But, um, so that, that in itself is a little bit different in design, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So, so uh, if you're interested in the new BMW GSs and the new technology, then uh, this could be the video for you. So set yourself down, make yourself comfortable, and drop C, roll the intro. Well, thank you very much, Barnstormer, for letting us lo loose on your new beasts. So, yeah, it's quite excited about this, mate. I mean, uh, I, I managed to see this on, I went to Garmisch for the, for the unveiling, and I saw it in the flesh um, at Garmisch. So, a lot, you know, obviously this bike's had so much hate, isn't it, on, on, the, on the socials and stuff. But I've always said it looks all right, because I was there, I saw it when it was unveiled in the flesh. It's definitely one of those bikes that looks better in the flesh. Yeah. yeah. Um, and certain angles, it looks a bit odd, doesn't it? So you've got to be careful how you look at it. <laughs> no, no, but, but it, it does. But let's just have a look at the previous model. You, you know, you have to accept that that also looks, from certain angles, quite odd, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so I think that's, that's what they thrive on. That is what it's all about, isn't it? Pushing the boundaries. Exactly. And I think it's instantly made the 1250 version look dated. It's, it's instantly yeah. made the 1250 look dated when you look at that. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I agree. <laughs> So this one here is the ASA version automatic. So I've never used it before. I have done a little bit of research online, but I'm probably still going to make a complete hash of it. <laughs> so you might have to give me a minute. I don't even have to turn the bike on. Is it here now, isn't it? Yeah, it's there, yeah. Look at, look at the size of the tank on this bad boy when you sit on it. 30 litres. And you've got the engine bars which stick out a bit as well, but it's not wider than the bars. So I thought they're going to be a pain catching things, but the bars are still wider. I don't know why it's really got those. Shift to gear. Oh, okay. Do I then put it in, don't I? Yes. Oh, I'm in manual. I will put it in. I'll put it in drive to start drive. with. Drive. Bit of auto action. Oh, I'm in the auto mode. It's um, really smooth gear changes, but it changes up quite early. Some people have said that is because it's, it's a way of getting it through the Euro emission stuff. Again, it, it's a Euro emission scene because the bike changes really early, so then all of the emissions yeah. are lower. So when they test them, they test them in the, the auto mode. That's why they're set like that. That's what somebody, I don't know how true that is. That's, that's what somebody said. On the lever, it doesn't feel like a quick shifter lever. It, because it's, I don't think mechanically it's doing anything at all. Ah, it's just like a sensor. So you're not, you're not moving physical metal work, you're just on a sensor. No, exactly. So it's, re it's, it's very light on the foot. And yeah, you can tell there's no mechanics there. That is literally just a sensor that's then controlling some actuator that's actually doing the work within the engine. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but it just feels really light and different. So it's almost like buttons, but for your foot almost, isn't it, really? Yeah, ex that's exactly right. I'll tell you what, though, the gear changes are so smooth on it. Are they really? That's interesting. Yeah, really smooth. I don't think anyone's ever said that about a GS, have they? <laughs> it's got to be a first. I must say, the GSA, when you jump on it, it does look, it looks huge in front of you, but it doesn't feel unwieldy. It's surprisingly, it feels agile. The GS is always amazing the way it hides its weight, though, isn't it? And, now, even though it looks humongous, you're expecting it to feel a bit heavy, but you know, it really doesn't. It feels very nice, actually. I think the GSA's got slightly longer travel suspension than the standard GS, so it's about another 10mm front and rear over what the, the, the standard GS has got. 
So I, mean, I guess that's just for a bit more sort of rougher road action, you know, just to cover up with those potholes and stuff. But when you're taking your GS around the world, of course, how's your downshifts on the auto? Really, really nice. Blimey. Well, it's a bit weird when you come in here because obviously there's no clutch. And normally yeah. I'll be on and off the clutch a bit, so that takes a bit of getting used to. That's the thing, I think, with the auto. It's just the slow speed stuff, I think, is where you tend to miss the clutch a little bit. If, if you're doing some manoeuvring, you know, tight manoeuvring, you've got to sort of cover the rear brake and give it a bit of throttle so it doesn't come off. That's just what I found on, on, the, on the Yamaha system. Oh, it's, it's so, uh, so plush, the suspension, isn't it? It's... The brakes are also really good. Yeah, really nice. Quite a lot of power, feel. You know, and you're hauling up a heavy bike, aren't you? Surprisingly... Uh... Yeah, it's very nice. This is uh, this is very nice. They're so, I mean, you know, just jumping on it, I haven't ridden one for ages. You know, I reckon the last time I rode the GS 1300, that's probably like January, February time when we did it, that, that review. But they're so easy to get used to, aren't they? So comfortable. They are easy to live with, aren't they? Yeah, it is very easy to live with. I mean, it's a, it's a great mile muncher. You know, it's got to be one of the best bikes out there, isn't it? Just, just for munching miles. A load ago. Yeah, every time we jump on one of these, it's a little bit like I don't want to like a GS. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard not to, isn't it? They are so bloody good. Right, should we have a little swap, mate? Should we have a little swap? Yeah, it's ready? definitely swap. Yeah. Let's just pull Ooh, it. Went for the clutch then, and there isn't one. <laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so basically, to, to to go into drive, so that we're in neutral, so you have to hold the brake on. Yeah. And then you put, just push it, and then so then it's saying, okay, go into gear. So you then go into gear, and then you're in one manual. Right. Okay. But then to go back you. into neutral, just hold okay. it, ah, and it got hold it. Okay. You got it. But already, I wouldn't go for that gearbox. No. Uh, and I tell you why. It's not the clutch. I don't like the fact that that is basically just a sensor, yeah. and it, you you yeah, don't get any feel. Yeah. So the gear change is the gear change, and I'm not disputing that the gear change is smooth, but it, I feel like I'm a few steps away from what's happening, and I don't like that. Well, we'll see how you feel, yeah, because you may, you may get used to that. You, it could be something you get used to. I won't. I won't. <laughs> you might, you might. <laughs> so it's not a criticism, and, I'm, 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 and, I'm, and, and I've got to say, I think the system, it works well, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I don't prefer it, and I think that... You'd end up using the gear shifter all the time, but you've got a quick shifter and blipper anyway, so what's yeah. the bloody point? I, I, to be honest, we are talk a bit about it, but I, I'm against all these automatic systems now. But, yes, that's another matter. Oh, this is bad. It's got a bit of girth, isn't it? It's got a bit of girth, isn't it? <laughs> it's got a bit of girth. It looks good, doesn't it? It looks nice. It feels physically quite a bit bigger. But I don't think it feels... It doesn't feel noticeably... It is a bit heavier, but... When, when I parked it there on the slight slope, when it was right on the side stand, it was like, oh, God, yeah. that's, that's a, that's a big old hoik. Oh, the, the car oh. coming. I'm going to get out of the way. Okay, mate. I'm right in the middle of the road now, and I've got to work out and pull away in a hurry when someone's hustling me. Let me pull over <laughs> here a minute. <sighs> oh, he's pissed off. I just waved at him, and he literally gave me the filthiest look. <laughs> <laughs> well, he drives a Land Rover, what do you expect? Actuate brake. It's not going in first. No, so pull, pull the brake, pull the brake, All right. and then push the button. Oh, and then it yeah. should, and then push it down into first. Right, I think, I think, I've got it. Yeah, yeah. It's quite. Um, it goes straight away, doesn't it? It's not like a delay. You know, when we no, on the DCT it, system, there's a slight delay. It, no, it's definitely feel. And in fact, what we'll do, if you don't mind, let's do some really slow stuff. And I'm talking about where you'd be slipping the clutch. Just we'll find somewhere and just see what it's like because you're right. The, on the um, on the DCT uh, Africa Twin. It was a little bit lungy from stop when you're just trying to feather it. I'll just be intrigued to see whether it's like that. Oh, I don't, I don't mind that gear, Liv. I think it's all right. Yeah, but you, I know, but I know you're what wrong. You mean. But it's you're wrong. <laughs> it's definitely lighter <laughs> than a, a, a conventional shifter, like on that bike. But it's got a bit of resistance there. It's not like a cock in a sock rattling around. But um, just changing the subject slightly having hopped straight on the adventure here. If it, this feels taller to me than that. It is, it is taller. It is, it is taller. It's, like I say, I think it's another 10, 20 mil taller, more time yeah, on the it suspension. Really feel, it, it feels it, the seat feels different as well. It does, you're it right, feel, yeah. Yeah, if, uh, this feels flatter and a bit wider, it just feels different. 
So there, there, there's definitely a different, fi different feeling of the two bikes. I think perhaps this one has the low seat option though. But it potentially, we'll have a look when you go off again. They, they could have put the low seat option on one of them. Yeah, okay, this feels, this feels better for my height anyway. You're right, it's super slick, that gear change though, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's, it's, there's no feeling, is there? Well, we, we, I, I think that, I, I don't mind that. I think that feels all right, if I'm honest. No, it's shite. <laughs> You're wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. When you're on the power, there seems to be a little bit of a delay, isn't there? Yeah. When, when, when I just accelerated and I was upshifting, there's like a split second between doing the lever and then it changing gear. Whereas normally, exactly. as you did that, it would change gear, obviously mechanically. Because it's mechanical, exactly. You're right. I do. I, I think the feel of it's all right, but on the power, then there is a slight delay. So, so exactly, and that that's why Chopsy, I am the expert reviewer now. Well, <laughs> I, I spoke too soon, didn't I? I, sp I spoke too soon. I'm really liking this. I, I I really do. It just it makes me feel good, and I, I it's such a weird thing to say, isn't it? But. The view, the riding view on the GSA is much better than the, the GS, isn't it? I mean, it doesn't look as imposing when I'm sat on this. And that was so, some of the sort of criticism actually when this bike came out, wasn't it? It's felt a bit small and a bit low. That's definitely yeah. brought back the, the, the beefiness to the GS, isn't it? Oh, definitely. And I tell you, it, it feels, which doesn't get mentioned much actually, everyone talks about the looks, the quality feels impeccable. It feels so taut. The suspension's lovely. It just feels really well screwed together, I think. Yeah. I'm actually already very impressed. It, it takes something to impress you as well. No, it does. It really <laughs> does. And I, I'm, I'm not joking. I, I actually really do think it is impressive. Well, you are a former GSA owner, though. You know, you are in that GSA owner's club, aren't you? But not, not for long. No, but it doesn't wasn't matter, for long. Doesn't matter how long it was. <laughs> you, you had one, and that's all that matters. You did own one. I did. I did own one. <laughs> And it was for a specific purpose, actually, which I didn't actually then need, which is why I didn't give it. But it was a 1200, and I think the, you know, the, the 1250, I think, was a big step up from the 1200, and this it is a, a step up again. Just the refinement, the gearbox particularly, obviously more power and torque. This is very nice, though. Oh, the wheels in the air is absolutely wheeling, then. Took me by surprise. <laughs> it's a big power Do you know where we're going? Is it a big power wheelie? Do I know where I'm going? No. We're on, we're on adventure bike. This is an adventure, mate. We're going full on adventure here. We don't know where we're going. We should have gone left there, I reckon. Yeah, I much prefer this system to the, the buttons on the handlebar system to change gear, though. This feels much more conventional. It's sort of that auto mode but auto light almost isn't it because you've still got a lever it's all, you know you almost sort of forget about it because it'd just be like you'd be on the quick shifter i much prefer that with with with, with, a, with a gear lever i think they've done it yeah it's a very good idea because they all move to buttons don't they if you want manual mode and that that does but the kcm's the same going. i think because they've got a, a system out as well haven't they and i think that still retains the 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 lever the only thing that worries me with these automatic systems and it was the same on the on the yamaha you know, when you're rolling, you're using the quick shifter 100% of the time, and I'm yet to find a quick shifter system which works 100% of the time at all conditions. And I do, I do feel that it could put a little bit of additional wear on your gearbox. Now, this does seem super slick on this, so maybe this is the exception to the rule that the GS, but I certainly thought that on the Yamaha system. I know exactly what you're saying. You, you can't do a sympathetic gear change because it's doing it for you, and at the wrong you're right, the wrong rev levels or the, you know, not quite the right power and it does a quite a lungy gear change and you can feel that mechanical, yeah, sort of clunk that it doesn't like. I, I know exactly what you mean. And, and I'll report if I have that you're during this ride, whether it's any time it does something which feels like you're putting a bit of strain on the gearbox. But as it's an adventure bike, you know, it's very important that you stand up on them if, if you're going to have a proper adventure. It's quite comfortable, the uh, old GS to stand up on, because the bars are quite high, aren't they? Yeah, it's it, not it, bad at all, is it? Even for tall buggers like us, it's uh, it's fine, isn't it? And they're quite thin between your legs, so you can squeeze your you can squeeze your knees and hold on. You can squeeze your yeah, you can squeeze your knees against the seat. The, the foot pegs feel really nice for st for standing up, don't they? Yeah, it does. and you can certainly move the bike around. Easy stood up. Yeah, yeah, it's got quite a bit. Can't of... you? Agility it's easy there, to control, isn't, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah with your feet, we're putting weight on your pegs, and yeah, that's that's 
Yeah, I can imagine this would be very nice actually on a gravel lane or something. It wouldn't, it wouldn't feel too in intimidating, I wouldn't think. I think as, as a motorcycle, and you know, I don't really want to get into the looks of the adventure too much because it's, you know, it's a personal choice, isn't it? But I, I can tell you now, this bike is very impressive. It, it's flawless, it's easy, the fueling's lovely, the engine's got plenty of grunt. It's bloody brilliant. It's good, isn't it? I think it's time to swap back again, mate. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you all take gearbox away. <laughs> no, no, no. You only want to swap back that's going to run out of fuel. <laughs> no, we can if you want. Isn't there a pub? There's a pub here, isn't there? Put in the car park. Well, it's a bit early for a pint, mate. It's only. Uh, no. it's only oh, you mean swap by? Okay, mate, gotcha. So swap by. <laughs> oh, look, the screen goes down. Yeah, it goes down when you turn it off. Quite cool, isn't it? I love it. He loves it. He, you what? You you love it. You I love do. I love it. it. I'd buy one. If I'd buy one. Is that power for the top box then? Yeah, yeah. You've got to do so you can put a charger in there. Stuff. Stuff. Well, yeah. you got central lock in on the panniers so when you unlock it. Unlock, and also I think it's got light in there and stuff as well. Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah, nice little touch. How much bigger it? it is? I know. It looks huge. Doesn't yeah, when it? you look, look. So that that's the, obviously the adventure, and then you look at the sort of girth of the non-adventure, and you can see a lot more. Can you see a lot more of the engine? actually probably not but yeah it's it's probably at least a third bigger it's almost twice as big isn't it the tank size see i, I love this finish on this i mean that looks really that looks premium doesn't it premium yeah, it whereas does. if you just got the plastic panels i mean that that is and these little things where you've got the little clips and very yeah, no, ut it, utilitarian doesn't it it looks utilitarian it just looks rugged it looks cool i really really like i mean obviously you can get them on here as well those gold wheels i think are definitely a brilliant addition i'd i'd, I'd go for those myself we're a bit poncy though, we like, we like the old gold, don't we? <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> but I do, I think gold wheels, you can't beat it. I'm not, you know, talking about the looks, I, I like the look of it. I thought they were indicators. Oh, oh did, did you? Yeah, obviously they're not because yeah, they're in the yeah. mirrors. But they're just daytime running lights, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, they're Well integrated, aren't they? It looks better than just having like big... The spots, Big yeah, units, that's, that's just yeah. nicely integrated, that. I like that. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Another thing about the GS I like, I like the fact that all the mess in the front wheel, because it's a boxer engine, yeah. you haven't got any, you know, it's quite easy to keep that clean, is it? It doesn't really matter, does it? Whereas like on a Ducati, no offence, but you get the pipes there and it all burns onto the pipes, yeah. and it just actually gets a bit mucky, doesn't it? The radiators are up out of the way, so you're not got all that shit, yeah, all, all stones, stones hitting in the radiator no, as right. well. Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? It seems Absolutely. well thought out, doesn't it? Yeah, it's cool. Typical German, typical German, well thought out. Yes, they know what they are doing. <laughs> they know what they're doing. <laughs> I'll tell you what I don't like about either of them though, but it is what it is. Blind spot monitoring, I guess, is it? Yeah, well, that's the rear radar, yeah, exactly. But I, I think it looks better on, again, I think the GSA has done a better, it looks more integrated than perhaps Yeah, that's just that. sort of lump there. That's true, yeah, because you've got that sort yeah. of lumpy bit of plastic yeah. and it is just part of the bike, that's that true. That looks better integrated, doesn't it? I love this little world on the tank here. Look at this, it's nice, isn't it? It's a nice little tank, isn't it? It's a nice world, isn't it? It's nicely done. Just a really nice looking world, and they've obviously kept that exposed deliberately, haven't they? It's cool. Yeah. You know, I mean, you've got it on both bikes, but these cubby holes are really, really handy, aren't they? Get a phone in there for sure. Yeah, you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely you could. One of the things I don't get is why why are they still using Garmin navvies? Why isn't it all integrated into the dash? Yeah. Well, I quite like a separate thing, Do though. Do you? Because you, you, then you're leaving your screen sort of free and just have your sat nav there they also what, do like so you have all, all your normal data yeah exactly and then you got, so you haven't got it interfering with your normal data view are you sponsored by bmw right <laughs> <laughs> oh hang on come in a minute right well, let's do it can't again. believe that see you're getting a round of applause and everything viewers <laughs> 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 We do it again. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Back on the standard GS, if I can call it that. I'm going to try this slow speed on a bit of stones look, so just to see what it's like. Oh, it's actually, oh, the lock is brilliant. It's really, really impressive. No, I'm, I'm talking about the actual, just the gentle pull away, because there's no clutch. So look, this is, you can really feather the throttle chops and that, that is definitely, sorry Honda, that is easier to manage than the DCT box. 
No, I'm, v I'm just literally yeah, rolling. Yeah, you are, yeah. And I wonder, you go on and well, off. Mate, if you, well, mate, if you turn now, if you're doing a tight turning circle, what's that like? Yeah. Turn left now. But does it cut into neutral? Does it keep no, the power no, it's stay fine. on? Honestly, I'm just on the throttle. That that is no less control than the clutch. That that's that is clever and impressive. Yeah, because I, I thought it might be a bit hard to manage at that real slow stuff. Yeah. Well, the Yamaha system definitely is. It, it, it pulls the clutch quite early. And I know we're not going to talk about the electronic gearboxes anymore. But yesterday, or day before yesterday, they announced a new Tracer. And the Tracer GT Plus only comes with the AMT, the automatic transmission. You can't have it without. And this is what I was worried about. If it was always an option, that's great. But when they start bringing out models which only have the auto gearbox, that's, that's, that's bad news. Yeah, that's not good. How are you finding the GSA as you jump back on it there then, Chops? Oh yeah, I didn't even think, just so natural, I just jumped on and... It's quite a different riding position, it's quite a bit taller, isn't it? And the seat feels different, doesn't it? Yeah, I think that could be because that one's got a low seat on it. But it's, it feels wider maybe, the seat, because the subframe is different, so it could well be different, yeah, it could well be different. I think you're right, I mean, even with my fat ass, I'm fully supported with that seat, and that's not always the case. And that will mean it's comfortable because you've got all your weight across all of your bum. Right, should we come off the main road to go back on the little gnarly stuff again? Because that's because we're adventuring, aren't we? We're adventuring, so that makes sense. Let's go left here. And it'd be funny if you run out of petrol as well and I can just ride off and leave you. Yeah, thanks. How are you getting on with that gearbox now? Do you love it now? It's, 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 it's very smooth. You know, there's not a lot, there's no feel through the lever because it's, yeah, there's no mechanical um, connection there, but it's, it is so smooth. The, the gear changes up are definitely smoother than the quick shifter i'm still a little bit unsure as to whether i'd go for it because you'd probably want to use the gear lever all the time because the auto mode changes up a little bit too early and therefore if you're going to do it in manual mode all the time why not just live with the quick shift and the blipper that'd be my view but it, but they've done a good job of it there's no there's no denying and i guess if you were commuting and you went through city centers or london then you would want to put it in auto and just forget about it. I get it completely. Yeah, the, the implementation does seem very good because I was a bit worried, you know, that the first generation of this new technology sometimes takes some refining, doesn't it? So I think no, you've you got to be quite brave to buy a first year gen of something like that, an auto gearbox. Because you think, how long has it taken manufacturers to get quick shifters to be really smooth? And they're not, they're not there 100% 100 of the time, but it's taken probably six years to get you know, to constant refinement to get quick shifters to the point whereby you can use them in 99% of the situations now, or 95% of the situations. So it does worry me a bit with that new tech like that, that it's just something else to, uh, to potentially go wrong, isn't it? Sounding like an old fart again now. Sounding like my dad again now. Oh, it only go wrong, you want basic, you don't, you want, you want windy windows, not electric ones. I, 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 I don't think it'll go wrong. There's, there, you know, I think what they've done is quite clever. I think there's an actuator for the clutch engagement and disengagement, and there's another actuator to actually change the gears, which then obviously rotates the barrel, which changes the gears. And actually, I think it's, it's that is quite straightforward. I mean, I'm not saying it's quite straightforward to, you know, to design it, but it's not. I don't think it'll go wrong. I, I, I wouldn't be too worried about that. Yeah, I think I know. I don't want to make this whole video just about this gearbox, but. It's, it's really interesting, isn't it, going back to back with the gearboxes as much as anything else, the actual bikes themselves. And, but that mechanical feeling you get through that lever is not particularly nice. You know, you can feel the clunk through the lever, and I think that's, that's why it seems smoother on that version, because you're not getting that mechanical clunk through the lever. I mean, I think my recommendation, I'm sure you'd agree, Chop, is, you know, people watching, you've definitely got, if you're going to buy a GS1300, You've got to try both gearboxes and decide which one works for you, haven't you? And I think it's a £600 option, the ASA gearbox. And, you know, I'm not belittling 600 quid, but it's not it's not life-changing sums of money for most people that can afford to buy one of these in the first place. If you want it, it's worth 600 quid, isn't it? You know, and I've not, I've not really missed the clutch because these days you don't really use the clutch that much. It's only when you come to a stop. And, and it, as I say, in that slow car park stuff on the gravel, it's so controllable, even at, you know, but slower than walking pace, literally just feathering it, it's fine. So, you know, I wouldn't have it, if you had the adventure and you went off-road on it, I mean, when I say off-road, I mean, you know, like gravel lanes and that, it'd be fine, absolutely fine. Well, you've got loads of overtaking power, absolutely loads. 
Yeah, I have to say, it's very nice, isn't it? You can see why it's a top seller, can't you, the GS, when you, when you ride one? Yeah, that they're both going to sell so well. You know, even with all the sort of haters on the looks of the adventure, it's going to sell well, isn't it? I bet you any money it sells well. And rightly so, because it's, it's, it's so good. Chatted to the Barnstormer guys, they said, yeah, it's selling well already. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised. It, it's yeah. brilliant. No, you're not going to be disappointed if you bought one. And I just I like the view when you're riding it as well. It's definitely a better view when you're riding it than the the, the, the standard GS. It's definitely better. I never thought I'd say this either, but I do. I feel quite content when I'm on the adventure. And I, I don't, you know, I feel I don't know about cool, but I feel quite good on it. And yeah, that's an important thing as well. I think it's it's a good bike. So hang on a minute. So in this video, you've said you you'd buy one. You've said. You feel cool on it. Are we, are we right, talking no, about said, a GS I, I, I here? Are we talking the right about word, <laughs> I feel good on it. On the adventure, that is not on this. I don't. I don't feel. I, I feel a little bit like I'm glad I've got a tinted visor on when I'm on one of these. <laughs> so no one can recognise me. But I think the adventures. There's just something about them, and they are so extreme looking. I think that it goes beyond being terrible to being quite cool because it's so extreme. That's my view. Well, when I was at Garmish, when they unveiled it, we had a chat with like, the managing director for BMW Motorrad UK, and he actually said he was happy with the reaction on social media because what he said was, if people like it straight away, they know they've not pushed it far enough. They know they've not pushed the styling far enough. So he was quite pleased. There was, I say pleased, but maybe it's been a bit of a spin on it, but he's like, well, we know we've gone far enough. We know we've pushed it enough. So there we go, I think that's about it mate, I think that's about all we can say isn't it from an initial sort of riding impression type video. I've got to say a massive massive thank you to Barnstormer BMW for lending us the bikes. This is their demo fleet so if you want to ride these exact bikes give them a ring, I'll put website links below, book yourself in, have a test ride and let me know what you think in the comments because I must say I've been super impressed with that GSA and if I had to buy if I was buying one, I would pick the GSA over the standard bike without doubt. What about you, Greg? I would 100% have the Adventure. I think it just, it's the ultimate in versatility. Um, I like the fact that it rides a bit higher. I prefer the view from the cockpit and I prefer the looks overall, actually. Um, but I wouldn't have the triple black. I would like the green one, which is in a matte green, which we'll look at in a minute and hopefully you'll be able to get a little bit of footage of some of the models that Barnstormer have in, they've got a good choice and the green looks with the gold wheels, it's definitely me. Bling, bling, bling. Bling, bling, blingity, bling, bling. Tr trust you to want the most expensive one. <laughs> <laughs> always. It annoys me, I'm always drawn to the most expensive. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm impressed with that GS, I have to say, and I'm also impressed with this gearbox. Would, would I have the auto gearbox? I like the fact that you've got the lever. I don't, I'm not sure. I, the, I need to spend a bit more time with the bike, I think, to decide if I'd have that auto box. Probably not, but I, I do think the system works extremely well, which is uh, quite impressive. I think I'm with you. I think they've done an amazing job. It's 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 the best system that I've tried. I like the fact that you lose the foot lever for manual shifts if you want to, so that feels nice and conventional. It's butter smooth, all of it, and I think for £600-ish as an extra, I think it's definitely well worth it if you want it. And I think if you did a lot of city riding, just whacking it in auto would be quite pleasant. Yeah, it would. Like riding to London and stuff every day. You could yeah, exactly. A lot of people do that, don't they? You can see the benefits of it, can't you? But there we go. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you want to see some more of our comparisons, we've done a 1300 versus 1250, which I'll link at the top. We've done Super Dukes versus M1000Rs. We've done everything really that now, so I've got a playlist with our head-to-head -head comparison, so I'll link that as well. But I hope you enjoyed the video. We will be back with more of these. There's going to be a GX versus Tracer comparison coming and all sorts of other very cool stuff that you don't want to miss. So have a good one, keep it rubber side down, and see you on the next one.